Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are going to be beginning the narration and character voicing for the just as of this recording released side story What the Firelight Casts. So, before we begin, let me say a couple of things, mostly for newcomers of Arknights that might be listening to this narration and this very episode. Uh, for those of you who have finished episode 9 and even maybe went beyond that with episode 10 and 11, uh, I will leave a timestamp in the comment section below, pinned comment by me. Uh, hit that and you will be straight at the beginning of today's narration. However, for anybody new both to the channel and to Arknights, hello and welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay. There is a lot of narrated comment, uh, content here with character voicing. If you just want to sit back and listen to the story uh, whenever you have time or you are in commute or something, you're very welcome to. However, before we begin, let me say a couple of things. So, this particular side story is very heavily heavily linked to the main story of Arknights, specifically episode 9 or chapter 9 of the main story. However, I wanna I want everybody who is new to this to keep in mind that episode 9 can be consumed on its own. Heck, even the game itself will allow you to jump straight into episode 9 when you are done with the initial act of the game, the very first couple of episodes. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, however, is if you are gonna be following with the narration that I did for this, uh, for the main story of Arknights, uh, just look out for the playlist in the description of this video, episode, or rather part uh, 19 is where it begins. And um, I will be telling you in there which parts have, or rather you should skip if you are directly jumping into it. Because specifically when you jump for the first time into episode 9, uh, you will be greeted with a uh, recap cutscene. I do not know, however, how much the recap uh, recaps, <laughs> funnily enough, uh, when you have not completed all eight episodes, if it actually just keeps track of what you did so far, or if it actually goes and recaps everything. But keep in mind, if you're going to be reading yourself through episode 9, skip the first scene that immediately starts playing before you are at the stages. There will be a scene that plays, it is a recap, skip it. And then just keep reading. Everything else throughout the entire thing is pretty much game. Just keep reading, just keep going. There will be a couple of uh, difficulty spikes later on through the chapter. So that's why I said if you're new to Arknets and have trouble uh, beating those stages but want to see the entire story, playlist is in the description. However, keep in mind, and if you're going to be following with the narration, uh, I will be telling you in the video when you should skip something. Because at the end of the final part of episode 9's narration, and if you're going to be reading yourself, there are two epilogue scenes. Uh, the first epilogue scene after the final battle stage is fine to go through. However, the second one, which is very far apart from everything else, even visually apart, uh, <laughs> when you look at the chapter, that one is a monumental skip if you are uh, if you are new to uh, new to the story and have not finished the first eight chapters. Because holy hell, will that spoil you shit? <laughs> not only will you be confused, but you will be super spoiled on stuff. But yeah. Once again, TLDR, episode 9, is my personal recommendation to at least finish this one. However, uh, as I've also learned just from through uh, the parts that we are going to be covering today, uh, there will be spoilers for some key moments of episode 10. Now, I don't know how much further they're going to go with mentioning certain key events happening over in the main story, because this story does run somewhat in parallel or past certain points so um yeah just keep in mind if you have not finished the main story completely you might get spoiled i will not point them specifically out what the key moments com moments are so if you are blind uh to certain stuff you will probably not catch on to some stuff but you might also will i don't know <laughs> but that's about it so then let us begin before we, however, begin uh, with the stages and the uh, story itself, we do have a tiny little cutscene to watch to introduce us into this myth. So then, let us begin with that, and uh, 
Enjoy! This is a story of Victoria, a tale from the distant past. An era when spring remained, an age before stone castles. A time when a girl made friends with two crimson dragons. One of them was greedy, but the other was true and brave. Both swore for eternity to protect her beauty and grace. Everywhere they went, the girl would find and take the most beautiful flower growing in that place. Then one day came when the greedy one exclaimed, Grant me a gift, should you call yourself my friend. With honey-eyed tongue, it begged the girl to braid a wreath with the flowers she had gathered, and the girl gladly agreed. With deft hands, she wove a beauteous floral garland and placed it around the head of the greedy red dragon. Yet the dragon of courage said, no boon for me, no gift do I need. Our journey is incomplete, and there's much for us to see. And thus it departed alone, and flew to the mountains beyond, where it created Terra, a kingdom to call its own. The flowers that thrive here grow in no other land. The domain was deemed perfect to adorn the girl's fine hand. The wind told the greedy one of its king's great findings. Speedily it flew towards Terra with the girl upon its wings. And the greedy drake was awed, dazzled by the native bloom. Resplendent shall be our crown when we take that flower from you. The good Drake was speechless as greed pressed the demand. There was nothing left of spring but the blossom of its own land. Long battled the dragons, a feud of naught but woe. But greed emerged triumphant, the flower was then bestowed. Though the blossom suffered wounds and several petals were shed, it became the brightest jewel upon the greedy dragon's head. The girl secretly wept, watching her friends fight and bleed. Then a lion snuck to her, giving whispers that soothed her grief. And the lion told the girl that it had a very large pride who would swear to protect her and vow to stay by her side. So the girl forgot her sorrows and played with newfound friends and no longer yearned for the drake who dwelt in distant lands. But the draken war barely ended when the lion pushed its claim. It seized the girl and roared, put the crown upon my mane. The good drake had not healed but valiantly it challenged the threat. Not for the crown it fought and killed, but the oaths it swore to kept. But the pride was ready for war and spilled the dragon's blood. It drenched the fertile earth and turned it to barren mud. The people grew cold and starved now that winter has arrived. They remain cowed and silent, though a question lingered in mind. Is it gone, our crimson dragon who lives beyond the peaks? Is it gone, O oh virtue's guardian, the one with no greed? Are you listening, Lakshini? Can you, and 
Will you answer that question for us? That was a very beautiful five minute cutscene, but very beautiful and informative. That was a lot of lore in there. However, before we begin, two final quick things before we start. Uh, number one, this side story, pretty much like episode nine of uh, the main story, contains a lot of uh, Irish words and names. And for some of them, uh, I will be stopping to give you guys uh, translations for the words, at least what I found for the translations. I did use, I actually did use an online Irish, <laughs> Irish to English dictionary with pronunciations. Oh boy. <laughs> I went on an adventure, believe me. However, I will be adding that. Uh, so expect extra, extra little info, including uh, I will be adding one extra little tidbit at the very end of today's episode, just to give you guys a bit of real-world lore for certain things. So that's number one. Uh, number two, when it comes to how we're gonna be going with the narrations, it's pretty much, if you've been with the channel for, for a while, it's pretty much gonna be the same old, same old. We're gonna be going over uh, all the cutscenes, all the titles uh, for each stage, all the descriptions for each stage, including uh, the the uh, entries for each uh, enemy unit as well. The typical. However, I will be for the training stages. I don't know if there's gonna be later uh, later on another one. However, for the training stage, I will be only adding the uh, title of the stage and the description, and then we are just gonna move on. All right, that's the two th two things I wanted to say. So let us start properly on our introductionary cutscene titled "Wilderness Bells." She casts a flame into the long night. <clears throat> and we begin eight years ago. The year is 1090. As a quick little reminder here, to put stuff into a bit more of a perspective, uh, once again, the main story of Ark Knights, Act 1, and ends at the beginning of the year 1097. Act 2, with episode 9, begins at the beginning of the year 1098, so a whole year later. So now we are in the past eight years ago. <clears throat> County Oak Grove. Your lordship, more than a paucity are inquiring after you, wondering what our planned next move will be. And we already begin with a word here that is paucity. Now this word is pretty much just, mean, the meaning behind it rather is, the presence of something in only small or insufficient quantities or amounts. So basically she told him just a small number of people are asking after him. <clears throat> anyway. Our repertoire has been a massive success all thanks to your backing. The Tarrant's own theater, the Tarrant's own history, 200 strong came to see the premiere, and my, were they overjoyed. Now we can pursue joint partnerships in a few factories on Baron McEnany's estate, or we can accept his offer of alliance with a number of bankers. Leave these topics for after the soiree, Sir Perth. Or have our typist make the arrangements in your stead, and they won't make much mess of it. We should talk tonight only of the freshly concluded performance and of Tarrant culture. Forget all that Victorian long windedness and flattery. Everyone, all this stat status and etiquette, this daintiness and diction, this respectable vocabulary we rely on to exchange thoughts. We were thought all of it by the Victorians. They're the same as the Victorian's machines saddling the Tyrant's hearts with contemporary ills. Time was all time was we only knew our natural highness and valor, and the blood we inherit from King Gale would serve without rest at the call of battle. But now we've been trained in the Victorian's guile and vanity, to the point where faced we're faced uh, with a true and genuine undertaking, a rally to an ideal many can only play it as a game in their own interest. It is not solely us either, 
It goes for the everyday Taran citizen we so often meet in the streets too. Since being contaminated by Victorian's vice, they have become our repothics and become rascals and ruffians. Very well said, my lord. Um, I'm sorry I accidentally broke my wine glass. And we meet an old friend, but now in the past, a plain-dressed bard. It seems your glass wished to interject. I'd like to ask your lordship's opinion on, on something. Pardon my memory, but who might you be? Uh, Williams the Bard, writer of the play that happened tonight. But you don't need to go to the trouble of remembering my name. I can say I've made much contribution to the literary circles. Hardly, Mr. Williams. As I've said, I've most detested the Victorian's long vindedness. Ask away. You've likened the Tyrants to a diseased people. How should we heal ourselves in, our, in your view, then? How should we save fellow Tyrants from the brink? I fear no matter how hard we strive, we cannot cure the blight core to us, just as muddied water cannot clean itself. So you say it's beyond us to save them, the rascals, the ruffians? You don't believe they simply lack for knowledge, education, that the power to help them lies in our pens? <sighs> Do you find an intellect is exactly what our enemy is? Of course, we write, we rally, we dream of the ideal nation of Tara. We try to rouse the memories of it sleeping in our blood. But you and I will have to be the ones to stay behind in these olden days. You see, I very much enjoy your works, and yet we're forced to use the Victorian language. <clears throat> I lay down now my soldier's honor here, so that in time the soil of Tara need no longer be soaked in carmine blood, and Draco cross no swords with Draco kin. Be that unless a day comes, whereupon Red Dragon's flame should lead all those that fell, our fighters from the forge to be reborn. As much as I'm flattered, it's all a simple record of the folk ballads. The most I did was add some metered polish. No, I'm just thinking. It's no sure thing that Tara will never have another Red Dragon. After all, none of us have ever seen a Draco before. How would we tell if whoever passes by us is actually a Weaver? And now back to present time. <clears throat> the year 1098. Village of Redridge, Skohana Fields. And this is another one where we're gonna stop for a moment. Now. The name Skathana is not something that I could find uh, how to correctly pronounce or anything. However, in my search, uh, which led me to the aforementioned Irish-English dictionary, I found in it something very similar. A shorter version of this name, which is Skathan. That is shortened by the last two uh, letters, being just the N and the A missing. And the word itself, so Skathan, uh, meaning mirror. However, I then found an even shorter version of that. <laughs> yes, I went down a rabbit hole. Uh, I found an even shorter version of that, which uh, is missing even the next two letters in the back, which are A and A. So the whole final, f f final part of the name uh, Anna is missing, and we are only left with Skath, which means shadow or shade. Which is why I love the naming in this game, because, oh my god, does this fit so well. <laughs> anyway, continuing. Found them! It was these two mucking about in the streets. Son of the window breaking! Son of the window breaking must have been their doing! Hey, settle down, you two, or else it's not your wrists. The rope goes around next time. 
Uh, wait, come on, stop being wild now. Once again, we're gonna stop for a brief moment here, uh, because I did not expect <clears throat> that in the dictionary I will find the name Theon, because the dictionary is not a dictionary for names, it is just for words. However, Theon is a name that I did find in there, and yes, the dictionary has pronunciations for both Northern, Middle, and Southern uh, Irish, which is funny because I will go with with the one that sounds pretty much like what is written on screen right now, which is Fionn, just pronounced very kind of fast, I guess. However, I also found out that it's pronounced pronounced Fionn and Fun, <laughs> depending on which region you pick. However, very funnily, finally, uh, the word is translated into four different uh, words in English which have a common thread going between them. So keep keep those in mind just at the back at the back of your head. The four words being blonde, cataract, fair, and light. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, officers. It was uh, our fault. Is that the one the lot, the ones rubbing up, rubbing up with Dublin? One of them them's wanted the other the other i've never seen <laughs> i knew these tyrants would all be in on it bloody god for good for nothings <clears throat> please don't do anything i beg you this is all we had on us you searched us all uh, ask us anything you want we'll explain we will shut up what are your pals up to eh where to go are they off gossiping info to dublin I don't know, honestly, I don't. We don't even have any pals. We've never met anyone from Dublin before. And you just want some people to beat to death. Give yourself something to report to you, noble brass. <coughs> you, you bloody Victorian scumbags. <coughs> hey, mum, are you? Take them inside. Don't let these ball sacks make their racket on the street. They'll wake up the rest of us up. Question the one with the bag first. If he's honest, he can suffer a little less. I I'm honest. I'm an honest person, I swear. Uh, no, I think... Hold on, Captain. I think there is more nearby. Uh, th th there's... What bag boy shouting about? Uh, fire! Shut up! Don't try to cover for your friends! Uh, no, there's a fire off behind you! It's a warehouse! Bloody Nora! I want the word out of team, to Team 1! Prioritize firefighting! Uh, did they dump us and go? Fionn, come on, undo my ropes here! Uh, oh, I'm tied up too! Uh, uh, who are you? Let's go, quick. Uh, I'm sorry you had to run with us. You've got nothing to do with this. It's fine, we shook them off. Hey, Fionn, the radio? Uh, right here. Should still be usable, just uh, a little quiet. Quiet's good. Keep us from being found. Uh, you listen for any word, I'll uh, go and wash my face at the pond. Try and calm down. Excuse, excuse me, Weaver. You can go if it's dangerous to you. I'll point you on your way. No need. I can wait here and keep watch for you. Uh, Alright, thank you. You're a good one, truly. No nerves, Fionn. No nerves. Out of sight. Uh, out of mind. You didn't touch blood. It is not blood. It's just marshy mud. Wash it off and it'll be fine. <clears throat> uh. 
bollocks. Hey, you swear this stupid thing still works? Uh, shush, God's sake. Those army lot can't be far away. Give it a few more knocks, then crank it. Approximately 9.30 p.m. There! A case of arson in a settlement close to the county Trent. Methods resemble those of the Dublin insurrectionists. The three suspects are still on the run. Should clues on Dublin elements not report them to the authorities. Considered equally guilty as these rebels. Warn you once again. The lights out bell, you are not to go outside. All areas apart from mines and factories are forbidden from lighting any lamps whatsoever. Put a stop. All activities related to these insurgents... And now only white noise is being heard. Dial. They really broadcast nothing else past 9pm. Now, this first word. Uh, I went with the most simplest pronunciation here, which is Dial. Is simply a word that uh, either means devil or fiend. Pretty much... It's, it's used here apparently as a curse word, like, screw it, fuck it, you know. Anyway, <clears throat> continuing. What are these bloody rules in MDA? Now, <laughs> God damn it, this goddamn guy, I hate him. Uh, so, in pretty much self-explanatory, I don't need to explain this. Now, the first word after in. The only thing I found in the dictionary was anim, which apparently translates to titular. Now, the second one is weird, and I couldn't find anything specific unless it's a name for something. Then it obviously it's not gonna be it's not gonna be in the dictionary. But uh, what I found is written the same, not with a capital D, however, uh, but pronounced day. And the only thing I found for it as a translation is glimmer. So if someone knows what that day is supposed to be, please. <laughs> You can tell me in the comment section below. Anyway, continuing. <laughs> Sorry, that's a foul tongue for Taran. Could you understand that? Yes, but that's fine. Hmm. No, still, I'm sorry for dragging an outsider like you into this. It's okay. Tarans are the same no matter where they are. I once visited the Scanthana fields myself. But they didn't have rules about lights out back then. Oh, I'm guessing you're from a nomadic city then. Bell ringing as law has been around for years. Used to just be out in the barrens to man whoever tried sneaking into whatever count or viscount's hunting rounds at that midnight. Bell rings, we snuff the lamps and fires go out too. If someone in the barrens lights a fire to herd beasts at this hour, you can see it clear as day from miles and miles away. But mock-ups like today only happen once the new rules get got stricter. Those night patrols uh, toss or see anyone in the streets, they snatch him. Uh, there, Fion. Calm down. I suppose so. Uh, where's our medicine? Uh, are we all out? Heck, I guess. Uh, shame about my fountain pen. Can't even note my own depths now. Stealing is what we're doing. Don't think you have to make up for it with uh, what you've got. How many days have we been outdoors now? If it's uh, not midnight yet, then it's day 12 for us. Alright. 12 days and we've only barely gotten far. I keep thinking if only I'd clear up, I might see chimney smoke or something from a village. We've just been hounded by the army, chased around in circles here. Be honest, do you really think we can make it out? What happened with you two? <clears throat> we had a little confrontation with the patrol. They sent a warrant uh, out for us. Pion! Let me talk, Fergal. I can feel this lady's a good person. When the patrol came here to make arrests, they summoned everyone who had a record, and then they started with the beatings, so we uh, fought back. You didn't, Fionn. Don't give yourself credit. Uh, okay. 
we hadn't done all that bad, really, truth told. One family ran after they couldn't pay tax dues, so the patrol was dragging all their relatives in by the scruff of the... for questioning. Fergal was brewing a little moonshine just for himself, and I'd missed some formalities while selling stuff. <sighs> We'd always owned up properly to whatever it was. It all got too much that day. It wasn't just the two... Just us two who scrampered once the patrol started beating. It's ten or so of us, all summoned that day by the army. We all ran at once. But if the army wants someone, there's no escaping it. That lot won't change their tune just because someone's word says they're innocent. You ended up killing someone? <clears throat> yeah, we did two of them in. Got one straight off with a hoe while they... We're on guard, the other one laid low in the whole scuffle. Shame we let the third one do a runner, or else the army would never know about what we did. Hey, we wouldn't be in such a miserable spot if we'd had one night more of a head start. Fergal, you think we could give ourselves up to them? I could do it alone even, just can't stand these days on the run anymore. We didn't even have medicine. Oren's cuts just festering away, and he's... I can't take it. I can't take it. You dropped a bloody idea. You think they make it easy on you? Bloody wouldn't. They torture your first crush your spirits. Two minutes with someone like you, and they'd get everything about us pouring out. Uh, look, we've got no meds. Torture by sickness. Let's torture all the same, yeah? Are you short on medicine? <laughs> We're sent out to rustle up some more, I'll say. They're waiting for us a decent ways back somewhere. We were here planning to buy it, honest. But we knew in our he heads uh, all the shops have shut the moment lights out sounded. We'd never make it in, uh, it in time beforehand. So we got a rough idea of when the patrol changes shifts. Uh, and we smashed through a shop window. I thought they wouldn't notice around about then. God. You? Guessing you're from the city. What got you out in the in this des desolate pl a place? I'm searching for some things. Do you know about Dublin? <laughs> uh... Yes, I understand. I have some anti-hemorrhagics. Jesus Christ, that word. Anti-hemorrhagics and bandages on me, actually. Mr. Fion, I saw you were hurt. We should sort that out. Oh, you noticed. Uh, it's nothing big, really. But if you're willing to share a bit of medi medicals with me, that'd be fair play. Our mates are hurt far worse. I'd bring them to them. I'd bring them to them if that's okay. Uh, they got bit by gloom pincers. In that case, I can go with you. That way. They have footprints in the mud. Leading that way. It's a tar rabble behind the arson. They're around here, no doubt. Uh, c quick, hide. It, it, it's a whole unit. Half a dozen people. They're shining their torches this way. Quick, bend down. Come this way. It's all the ground here. It's all right. Those soldiers won't dare to move too fast through the marsh. Shh. Theon, I can hear your teeth chattering. Uh, I... <clears throat> A torch flashes over them. Reed grips her spear tight, the metal warming hotter and hotter. Well, that's shite. How come you lot got torches? Piss me off just seeing you. Dublin? Get her! She's got info, no doubt! Get me! You're cutting me! What are you slinging mud for? Ugh. Come on, Fion. 
We've got to help her. Don't be a coward. All right, all right, okay. Mm. Ha! <laughs> Couple of fresh boys don't take much to sort out. Hey, Fionn, Fergal, you made a right. Hamus here, didn't you? Would have kicked the bucket if it didn't come looking though. Uh, no, yes, saved our skins. All thanks to you. I told you, see, all this smashing and looting business might be beyond me. Uh, wait, what are, what are you doing, Simon? It's enough to knock them out. You're going to kill them all. Now, here's another name. Uh, I was curious if this had a specific pronunciation. Uh, the closest I found was the same name, but spelled with an A instead of an E in there. And apparently the pronunciation is supposed to be... Uh, in that case, it's supposed to be Salmon, without the L. The L is uh, Mum. So I'm going pretty much with the same assumption here, but with an E, so... Semen? Semen? Which sounds bad, but I know. I know. I just hate myself for doing stuff like that, but whatever. <clears throat> anyway. Or rather, I'll go with Salmon. <clears throat> Which is still not the best. Anyway. <laughs> Whatever. Aren't we going to be more guilty for that? Same difference. It doesn't matter how guilty if they're after a tyrant. They got taken in, you're not coming out alive. It makes a difference in my head. Coward. You watch, I'm gonna do all the Victorian bastards right and... Stop, don't do that. And who do you think you are? What's the staring for? Wanna be a tattletale? Just to try. Tattle? No, you're not even part of Dublin. Why are you dressed like that? Why are you copying the Spectre Force's methods? And what? on what business do you claim that? You some Dublin know-it-all. Uh, calm now, Salmon. She's just a doctor. He was... Doing a runner with us just now. I think she's a good soul. I told her all about us. Alright, um, doctor. What you said about taking a look at our wounded is still valid? Sam and Honest, you need to call it. We mucked it all up. We didn't get the medicine. This kind doctor says she can help us. So that's all we can rely on now. Leave me out of this. Seems this doctor here recognizes my clothes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor. But I still want to try and help you. Alright, and we continue on to our first stage, which is the training stage titled Wet Earth. Plan your path carefully when traversing the muddy Terran wetlands. And we continue on to our first actual stage, titled Flight and Pursuit. Some seek the truth, some seek prey, others seek a way out alive. I do love the music that is playing right now. <clears throat> Leave your account book alone already. What? Gonna wait a few days and then go selling stuff out of your boot again? Uh, no, that's never happening. Uh, but just whenever I do something shameful, I feel the need to make a note. The doctor's a smart so She knew uh, how you gotten hurt on first blush, even. If she's not blaming you, that's because she forgives you. But she said she wasn't a doctor. She just learned a little first aid working someplace where they sell medicine. That's how she let us through treating our wounds. How do you know she's telling the truth? If you ask me, she's not your normal doctor, no, but there's no chance she's just a pharmacy worker. She had a full suit of medicine with her, out here in the wastes. That's... that's strange. Oh yeah, and did you see what uh, she had in the box of hers? You're a business type. Got a guess on how much it was worth. I didn't look properly. 
You can't be thinking of stealing luggage from the person who saved us. No, no, I'm just asking. <sighs> Got any more bread there? Not much. Give me a little for God's sake. Doctor? Uh, um, no, oh, sorry. I know you don't like being called that. Um, you want some bread? No, thank you. Uh, what are you reading there? It's just an old Taran poetry collection. Oh, oh, it's in Taran. I never knew much Taran, see? Even less so when it's written, I suppose. <laughs> if you want to sit down here, I won't mind. Alright, um... Actually, I've been meaning to thank you for last night. All I did was give you some medicine. I... There, there are things I ought to do. Cleaning wounds, bandaging, but I still can't do them that well. That's fine. I, I didn't even dare touch the wound myself. Scared the living daylights. What I wanted to say was, if you hadn't set that fire off, we might never have escaped. Fire? No, the fire wasn't me. I was just passing by. Okay, if you say so. It must have been a coincidence. Ah, uh, Dublin, my arse. Those army lot will call anyone who disobeys them, Dublin. We're all lost cause, but good people like you, you shouldn't have to bear such heavy guilt. Do you hate Dublin very much? I... I couldn't say. I'll give you a word of warning. Seeing as you've... you're from the city, for the past while Dublin's people have been around these parts. I hear they ran into one of... one lot of Victorious army, and not a single a single of those Victorians survived. That upset the lords of the city fear, so they transferred in a whole thing of soldiers to Trent, seizing people all over the Skahanan fields, burned several villages down too. You really shouldn't have saved us, truth be told. We are not worth it. <laughs> if I don't care for other people's lives, then I won't have achieved what I agreed with Bo Rhode Island. Um... Sorry, you're talking a little too quiet, actually. No, it's nothing. I'm already aware of some of what you've told me. I'll be careful on the way. Uh, you're going now? Hmm. It's day now. I won't need you to show me the way. Alright, alright, I understand. Tarans like you, sword speaking Victorian, so finally, I know you don't like to talk with us much. Hey, you see, Karen, when a uh, woman about this tall, tail, uh, tail swings all around when she walks. Now, well, could you look for her around these parts then, Doctor? She hasn't come back since last night. Uh, Salmon, uh, what's got you so... Ah, Fionn, uh, come here and help us out. Meanwhile... Oh, if you got signal here, uh, doesn't that mean we went the wrong direction again? Looks like it. McComb's facilities around here haven't been destroyed, which indicates they haven't advanced upon these parts. Hmm... Any word from Rhode Island then? And basically the same as what the news says. Arson committed by a small group of Dublin soldiers in Redridge Village last night burning down a building in the barracks. But said soldiers don't seem to have fled into these barrens. The rest is all invalid info. It just so happened... Uh, it just so happens every nomadic city uh, been far from these barrens for the past, uh, past month. Our field operators haven't reported anything unusual. While we've only seen what mark uh, the battle, uh, battles have left behind, and we can't even determine the scale of those battles from it. We can only tell one thing. There was a massive disparity between the two sides' power. It seems they made short work of that whole unit of Victorian soldiers. 
Backpipe, are you listening? Um... Your parts are installed in the wrong direction. Orientations. I can tell you're getting distracted again. Wow, Chen Chen, I didn't know you knew pile driver speed assembly too. It took me forever studying to actually remember how you maintain one. I never fully got my head around the assembly. I was just thinking, why does Hughes always sound like some somebody else in this la in his letters? I know it doesn't make much uh, sense uh, bringing it up, but uh, that's fine. I've always trusted your intuition to be on the mark. You feel like there's always something we uh, he wants to say, but doesn't dare to. Just like how last time we went to see him, it was like he was being watched. Hi, that's exactly it. That proves we're not on the wrong track. The intel Hughes gave us was accurate enough uh, so to put the enemy on guard. The army can hide their march route, but there's some leaked a uh, leaked hint of how raw materials are flowing for war purposes. Over the past few months, the few Dublin units we've marked have all converged to this area. The other parts of Trent, this uninhabited zone? <laughs> Chen Chen, you look like you've seen a... 3 o'clock. A Dublin soldier stands in the distance. Same dress as back in County Hillock. It's the Spectre Force! Come on, after them! Wait, wait, backpipe. There's something very strange about them. Oh, there are just a few of them. It's like they're standing guard. Are they bait? No, not necessarily. They're reminding me of some things that happen in Lungman. Don't underestimate them. We'll approach carefully. And that obviously leads us into our first proper battle stage. However, we shall only go over the enemies that are on this stage. Before we continue, of course. First off, we have our usual Dublin Scout. A scout of the Dublin forces. With superb concealment techniques, they are the cornerstone of the Dublin forces' guerrilla maneuvers. Equipped with a refractive mask crafted by the Shadowcasters, they are rather resistant to regular Originium arts. Then we have our usual Dublin Sniper. A sniper in the Dublin forces, the crossbows they wield bear the signs of Columbian modification. Equipped with a refractive mask crafted by Shadowcasters, they are rather resistant to regular Origini marts. And then we have our first new unit here, the Special Forces Soldier. A mercenary under the long-term employ of Victorian aristocrat, often uses the terrain to conceal their movements. All right, and we shall continue now with the after part. <clears throat> What's going on with these soldiers? They go down without putting up a proper fight and they don't even react to us yelling. They're already dead. They've been dead for over 48 hours. Chen Chen, I know you're a copper. You're not mistaken when you see things, but these people were clearly standing before we knocked them down, right? I saw a kind of arts among reunion ranks that could control other people. But this and that don't resemble each other. If Amia... If Rhode Island's Cautus was here, she might be able to feel out the difference between uh, better than me. That kind of arts refuted emotion and thought. It took living Sarkas warriors and wore them down into walking weapons. But these Dublin soldiers are dead without a doubt. There's just some intense emotion that's still burning in them. Even after they've died. Burning? It's just a feeling. If this art had a definite form, if I used my Shishao to cut through it, I'd imagine I'd be cutting through a fireball. Wait, I've seen... Purple flames. Strange purple flames burning in the eyes of dead soldiers. I saw the arts you're describing back in County Hillock. I haven't seen it since, not once, all this time. Chen Chen, we're almost there, aren't we? That caster leading the Spectre Force in County Hillock, she's got to be somewhere around here. I'll never forget how she looked. I'm dead sure I'll recognize her if, see, if I see her again. And when I do, I can find out the truth about Dublin. Right. Come on then, we need to keep asking around. Villagers, maybe caravans who've passed by, we'll find them. Even if they are not the Spectres for real. <sighs> Patrol 
spooky and brutally fast. It's lucky we got uh, good eyes on us. Huh, you don't think those Victorian Egypts say hello? Say hello before they come smack, uh, smack, uh, snatching. You don't move ahead. I'll take a proper count. Been worried we left somebody behind in all that panic just now. Oh, that's right. Uh, where's the doctor? Uh, did nobody fetch her? Didn't she say she was off by herself this morning? I'm not minding her business. Besides, it's not going to be an issue if a Vicky so soldier naps her, right? She's not wanted. Uh, look, she is. We got her involved in, in, in all this last night. It was dark outside, and the soldiers probably didn't catch her face properly, but uh, how many waver have you, have you seen around here? Well, if you can't help her, what's the point, point dosing about fretting the whole day? I, uh... Wait, hold on. Karen's here. Simon, you did that on purpose. You lied to her saying we'd lost track of a friend and could go looking. Why? She was kind enough to save us. And share us some medicine. And you just left her for the army to look to snap up. You don't get it. You leave her behind to attract attention. That gives us a safe getaway, getaway for the time being. Then she won't say much vital, uh, vital even if she's caught. She doesn't even know which way we're going. Not alone the fact that we're looking for Dublin. But but she could die. Yeah, she went off alone. She'll run into the patrol sooner or later. We should have taken all her luggage while we had the chance. Wouldn't fall into those Victorian scumbags' hands, at least. It was her choice, Fionn. Did you not see her face when she saw me? She knew Dublin, but never had the, no kindness for it, and she spoke standard Victorian. Her sword hates us more than the real Victorians do. I can't swallow that, Simon. I trust my intuition for people. Relax, madam. I'm not familiar with what's go gone on here. I know, you're not a Dublin ally. You just panicked for a bit and got mixed up with those insurrectionists. The patrol captain speaking in Taran. You've killed Dublins. <laughs> you understood that. We're not mistaken then. There's very few weaver around these parts that know Taran. Where did the Dublin soldiers take you lot last night? No, they're not Dublin, and they don't have anything to do with Dublin either. And I've never killed anyone from Dublin before. You've gotten something wrong. You can be honest here. You won't pay for it, so you don't need to fear it. The land around here has been under strict surveillance by the barracks. The Marquess of Trent has no plans to dither like some nobility has, letting Dublin stir up flames all over the place. That's why we could even tell who you were. Residents of a different village close to Trent Cityway reported news of Dublin to the barracks a few days ago. But those Dublin soldiers, before they could attack the village, were all felled by a white-haired woobier. Would we be able to turn on the tap, to so to speak? We'd like to query your identity, motive, as well as last night's arson, which held similarities to Dublin MO. Hold it, are you trying to flee? Stop her! This weaver is scared of going to on record. There's something afoot with her. She she broke my saber. What kind of strength does she? I've told you everything I can tell you. Let me leave. It will be best for us. You must be of a kind of those wretches if you're so protective of them. Bumptious tower rebel. A lot of you. Fire. A few bolts are enough to kill a weaver. Suppress her first. Why do you hate them so much? You're a Taran yourself. Shut up. You are not to address me with that word. <laughs> so anyone who spoke Taran since childhood is a Taran. I certainly never heard of the Taran people when I was young. If you're the one who repelled those Dublins, you should get in... Uh, get it into your head that the Taran is just an excuse of a moniker these bandits use to destroy the Order, and once you do, you draw a clean line between yourself and them. It was the erosion of the Tarans by Victoria's vain stylings that led so many to fall to banditry. 
A mentor told me this many years ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're hesitating. You're scared of even stabbing people with your pike there. Are you looking to... Are you looking down on me? Is that it? I, uh... It was because in an instant they'd become ash upon the barons. Go, Lakshmi. If you don't want what you do to be discovered, then the best way is to dispose of all eyewitnesses. No, I wouldn't do that. Mm. Captain! Retreat with the captain! Report is upstairs, request backup! It's okay, they won't catch up to me. I'll be leaving this place very soon. I know the speed at which the Victorian army mobilizes. This is far f This is far from wrong to do. Who's there? She trusts her spear for fin vigilance. Its point hovers over some shrubbery. Uh, it's it's me. It's me. It's me. I'm not going to hurt you. Meanwhile... Yes, I'm very well aware of County Trent. Uh, aware the County Trent won't be changing its entire course just for a single order, which is why we're willing to push back the delivery date and wait for the Nomadic City to come closer. Of course, only mines uh, with royal approval could provide originium fuel of such high purity. Hence, my being so very thankful for the Marquess of Trent's friendly attitude to us, I imagine we're all very happy with this business partnership. <clears throat> Your secretary has left with the signed contract, Mr. Hughes. He'll deliver it back to the office. Please, I ask you to trust him to properly handle such a vital agreement. No, 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 no. I don't mean to adopt this, uh, his management abilities. But rather... Doesn't this imply you have more pressing matters to discuss with me personally than the co uh, contract, hmm? After all, you did choose this secluded little gateway and dismiss your servants too. Quite right. It's no surprise you, you'd you surmise. <laughs> I had all these arrangements laid out specifically to convey my good faith to you. My wish is that um, our ensuing conversation will be founded on a mutual friendship from our time studying at the Royal Guard together. Look. Shh. How funny you should remember that name. <laughs> well, you do know how famous she was at the ball. Oh my, does it not make sense that her type could topple o over and not get up while dead drunk in some godforsaken place? Uh, yes, I trust the vast majority have forgotten all about her. Whether it was a true accident or some other party's orchestration, everyone knew not to stick their noses into it. I much thank you for so lavishly feigning surprise. My surprise happens to contain a kernel of sincerity. Bringing up a name vanished from the school, a name with no record anywhere in Victoria of existing. You're practically bidding specters to come. Hmm, you're... <laughs> you're not wrong. Then let me be bold. Why, Maz, did you contact me out of your own accord? I'm no more than a minor aristocrat making minor deals with all the mercantile breadth. I couldn't do anything about the info you've hinted at. Miss Informant, are you looking to circumvent your higher-ups to please your own swollen ambitions, or are you... If you've made full sense of this conversation, it wouldn't do me any more favors playing the fool, would it? The gist of it is, I'm here specifically given our previous time uh, studying at Royal Guard to offer you, and the two who've been searching for the Spectre Force this whole time, a little warning. You knew... Hmm, yes, of course I knew they came to see you, plus that you helped them pursue a batch of Originium products shipped to County Hillock half a year ago. Some people would say you've let slip a little too much. Hmm. I understand how sensitive your position is and how multifaceted your responsibilities. 
Rest assured, I would uh, absolutely never leak any of this classified information to anyone. As for these two rash students of mine, I'll give them a tact warning to quit while they're ahead. And I leave your staff a little head start on their investigation into your order's whereabouts. I appreciate your kindness, but being the parsley merchant I am, I fear I shouldn't be privy too much. To too much. No, please drop the humbleness. After all, you're the vice chair of your com uh, commerce coalition. I think the Earl that backs you would very much care about any info you gather doing business. Is the Iron Duke really so worth depending on, given his sheer silence up to up to now? You know, it's about time he decides where he stood. Hmm. Harmony, you're not telling me you're victorious. No, you... just who are you serving? Mr. Hughes, I'd be very happy to receive the contents of our next contract from you, sooner rather than later. And back to our group. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, really, I'm not here to hurt you. Please, uh, don't touch me. Uh, I couldn't will myself to come out just now. Sorry, I didn't help you. What am I on about? You're good enough with your spear there to knock a soldier out in a swing or two, hardly needing anyone else to help you. <laughs> you should have withdrawn by now. We... Uh, okay, you guessed as much. So, did they leave you behind too? They shouldn't... They wouldn't. You can't fight. You'd get caught. But you're a traitor here. You know so many people. If they treat you unjustly, you have too many methods you could re retaliate with. Uh, no, no. I was actually running back to bring you along, so you can flee with us. I know I'm a little late for that. I was feeling guilty and scared of running into the army and I just kept arguing with myself and now I'm here. It's a good thing you can fight at least. The army can't get their hands on you. Um, ma'am, say something. You're frightening, frightening me, you really are. I am? Why? I really don't know how to apologize to you in any way that makes it better. Honestly, they're a kind of bunch usually. It's a kind of bunch usually. It's just life these days has driven us mad. You don't need to say anything. It's fine. I don't mind. Think of me like... like reeds growing on the roadside. I won't poison you or crush you. At most, you'll feel a little stinging from me. Who would mind such a white lie? You say that with your hurt written all over your face. Do I look that hurt? You don't need to worry about me, but you do need to flee quickly. After last night's fire, the army will be sure to transfer mo more people from the city to search the wilds here. Uh, right, of course. Uh, there's one more thing, actually. It's a little hard for me to say. I know you're telling us to run, but for the past dozen or so days we've been hounded by the army this way and that uh, like beasts in a hunting route, just going in circles over uh, the wastes. You can't shake them. So if I could ask you one more favor, please help us. Escort us on our journey so we can catch the carrier truck that saves our lives. Alright, and we continue on to stage 2, titled Unlucky Reunion. And it says here, Beset by the same tragedy, people can no longer tell where the ba barriers separating them arose. Fisher, urgent correspondence from the Viscount. Fisher? Hi, pondering some question for the ages again. Apologies. While your mind has gone walkies taking in your jigsaw puzzle, that Harmony feline has been continuing to act without pause right here in County Trent. I assure you, my mind has not wandered, and surveillance of her has not slackened an inch. The way you act tells me the investigation's not made much headway. 
If surveillance during this stretch proves she's still loyal to her duty to Victoria, I'll be happier than if we catch a traitor. I've never seen you happy, period. After the failure of the last op, I thought I wouldn't see you in this office again. Don't put it that way. The op itself wasn't a failure. Are your results from... Uh, and your results from the hospital? Acute infection. Active originium shards abundant in wounds. Of course, my condition is under control now, I sure. The occasional headache will not impact my activities. That said, I haven't reported the diagnosis to the superiors yet. I consider myself as still able to assume the investigation into Harmony, not to mention nobody would want to take over the scraps of info on this region. There is a true goal behind these smoke bombs, and I have a duty to find out. And I am sure I will maintain a distance from all others during this period. With my experience handling emergency situations, you didn't even need to add that last part. We of these special forces will continue supporting your investigation, as long as the city hall still lets you in. Not going to say thanks. <laughs> Never mind that. I'm just cracking a joke. Trying to intense, uh, untense your muscles for once. Find some time to read the Viscount's letter, remember. Hmm. An invitation card. I see. Listen to you. Where are you going to take us? We can't keep wandering in these wastes anymore. There is no settlements along the way you're pointing us. You can't forget. You can't forget picking berries in a place as lifeless as this, let alone hunting wild beasts. And besides, you don't know if the rain's going to pelt us with zones one day. No catastrophe messenger ever heads through here, through there. I know exactly how many days it takes to cross that ma the marsh. Food-wise, we plunder our Victorian caravan and job's done. Oh, and that doctor's got enough medicine for us. She's not a doctor, and she's headed to a town herself. He agreed she'd part ways after escorting us to one even. What do you take her for, a personal first aid kit? Everyone's got to throw everything they've got in with you. Lives included, all because you want to be a little bit selfish, yeah? Am I wrong? Shut up, Fion. If you got a problem, why don't you go off yourself? You think you can handle that? <clears throat> Cowards don't survive. Salmon. Oh, Reed. You know how much I hate your nickname. It's like rocks and mud all over the ground. I don't even know if I'm talking to you or the grass we walk by. <laughs> I heard you two arguing. There's... I have to tell you something. We can't go to Tula village. The airwaves just said the army suspects two factories there of secretly producing supplies for Dublin. They drove out a bunch of people. A whole clash sparked off. We'll keep heading that direction for now. Forget catching the carrier. We'll probably get seized the moment we approach the village. <sighs> it's a miracle we got someone so capable to help us. Just barely made it out of it out here. <laughs> you say that like you you'll flag down a carrier and the good dales will come. Escape from a factory into a mine somewhere else until one lucky day a truck takes you somewhere other than Tara. You'll think that'll be a cakewalk. I know a lot of who fled that way. You saw them leave, that's all, because their village went up in smoke, because they couldn't pu put crops in any wasteland around. That's why they left. And you don't even know where they finished up, or if they did uh, it alive or dead. And do you even know where Tara is or how far you go before you've escaped? You've never shown that on a map. Stop trying to scare me with all th these big questions. Does it make you right just because I can't answer? Forget, forget it. I'll go talk with an old acquaintance here about borrowing some dry rations. Uh, it's like all that blabbing you do. Do's go going to conjure up enough food to feed the dozen of us tomorrow. 
He's very hurt. No oh, shit. He doesn't like telling lies, but he's got to come up with some porkies if he wants to borrow stuff. I'll be back. I can repay you. Things like that. I'll go and help him. You talk too much like those Victorian officers from the other parts. They won't trust you. Or are you just that good a line? I just don't like having to rob others. And I don't like your selfishness either. It's the greatest lie of them all. You're sure your friend said she saw Dublin around here? Why else wouldn't we be passing through here? Word spread among all the caravans. Everyone's opting to go the long way around just to avoid this belt. We wouldn't even have come here if you hadn't vowed to solemnly we'd be if you hadn't vowed so solemnly we'd be fine. Um but we're almost to your destination and we haven't seen a thing yet. Um it did happen some days ago. There's a chance they they're further off by now. What I heard was Dublin were scrambling on their way, so much they never uh, turned to look properly at my friend's caravan. Oh, and how many heads did he count? Which direction were they off in? That way, off into uninhabited wastes. As for how many, he said he couldn't count properly, and didn't dare to either. I've got no reason to lie to you, madams. We've got nothing to fear at all save those armed Dublin bastards and your average Taran hoodlums. Poor places are always crawling, crawling with bandits or what have you. We have security measures in place, I can guarantee you that. By the time we found out County Oak Grove was migrating far, uh, far and us caravans have to alter course through here, I already spent the hefty sum arming and armoring my people. Hold on a minute, Chen Chen. Look over there. Huh? There's someone dressed a lot like Dublin there. <clears throat> Fee, I tell you. That new tax ordinance they just announced, it's murder. None of us were so hard up in times before. Fionn, foreign madam, I'd love to be able to help you. But I'm living on pennies these days too, and you can laugh if you want. On the one hand, you want to feed a dozen or so a meal each, and that's uh, not uh, not nothing. On the other hand, you've st uh, you've got all these people with working limbs and working energy. You're best of coming up with your own solution. You know there have been sounding, uh, sounding lights out for years on the Skathanan fields, exactly to hold off the starving, to stop us stealing some noble spray, right? Faf, who gives you, a, who gives a toss about rules when you're uh, starving for real? If you just continue purely on others, if you're just counting purely on others to help your need, I say you were born eating your head off. No, 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 never. They're all law, law abiding. Come on, that's why I've, I'm even asking for a bite to eat on their behalf. Maybe I can do you something if you've got collateral. Sorry, Fionn, but verbal guarantees don't do us now. No, don't do us use now. A book? That's not gonna do it, madam. Not sure I'd even trust this to prop up my bed. Hello, is anybody? Is anyone in? Is that? Don't answer. That sick woman's here begging again. Does me in. You open the door for her, she'll be. Leaning on the frame, talking to, talking her head off for an hour straight. Leaning on the frame, she's an infected. I'm scared she's gonna have my house's door frame growing stones. Faf and all those bloody beggars. I thought last winter might have, uh, might, uh, might well have starved them to death. Shame they caught ill. But who asked them to loiter all over, uh, loiter all over pestering people? On s one second though. That voice. No, it can't be. But I wouldn't mistake it. Fionn, do you recognize her? I don't know. Uh, better not peek from the window. Those are sounds of fighting. Is somebody driving those infected away? No, it's the uh, highway outside the village. 
Oh god. See what I said? That's what starving people do. They start bashing other people in with uh, with hoes. Stop waiting. We don't run anymore and the caravan's gonna pass us. I'm willing to bet uh, Fion's not getting us food this time. Laughing stuck he makes of himself asking and asking doesn't even realize it. Those Victorians sneer at us day in day out. What's a single uh, bit of robbery to us or them? Weren't we gonna join Dublin and fight the Victorians anyway? But but Reed might just get angry with us. Just doing, uh, doing something like this. Let her! Shouldn't we loot while we still have the energy to fight people? You want to wait until our heads are spinning before we do it? And this is the first caravan we've seen in all these days. Who knows when the next uh, chance will come? Then maybe if we convince Reed to spring them with us, then at least our chances of winning are a little better. Enough! Stop bringing her up! What are we doing? What we're doing here has nothing to do with her. Are you going to count on her? A foreigner saving us forever. Move! We're doing this. And that obviously leads into the battle. However, we have two new enemies on this stage. One is the Swamp Gloompincer, an infected creature commonly found in the swamp of southern Victoria, known for randomly attacking travelers in the wilderness and posing a threat to the locals. And the other one is someone we have encountered on the training stage already, the Dublin Flame Chaser Soldier. A Dublin soldier fused with, the, with their leader's ember. Long since dead, but art's manipulation keeps their bodies moving towards their final desire. Rising again and again. Alright, and we continue. You goddamn torrents! Hell's bloody bells! Cut them, cut them down, teach them a li little lesson. Let them know never to lay hands on other people's stuff again. All right, you are. Let's teach the Terrans a lesson. You hear that, you bloody rebel? <laughs> My arm! You want to put us, us Terrans, to death? <laughs> Get them. We'll bash these bloody business doers in. We'll see who it is who dies. <laughs> Fall back. What are you using the sheath for? I paid you in cash. Shape up and act proper. The scabbard's enough. If you try anything else, I'll hold you off too. Besides, Backpipe and I are just traveling with you. We're not your hired guards. Don't get it twisted. You're monsters. You and that loon with the spear. Looks like that. Looks like what we heard before was true. Your average caravans don't dare cross through here. So you're the leader. Your clothes are an eyesore. Quick, Miss Shen, we're moving. Huh, scared of all, scared all of a sudden. Though you were going to teach uh, the Tarans, uh, Tarans a lesson. Dublin, Spectre Force, you call them maniacs. They were right, you run into those Spectres everywhere where Tarans are. That's right, you don't even need to piss us off. Just get, just get, just catch sight of us, and you'll be slaughtered to a man. Really? After pu pursuing the Spectre Force with my friend for this long, I've got an idea of how they should seem. Ma'am, take your caravan out of here as fast as possible. Backpipe and I will hold these bandits off. We'll pursue the Dublin forces afterwards on our own. We won't be troubling you again. Fine, fine. Ugh, God damn it all. Still feel like chasing. <coughs> hey, Simon. Think of something. We need to catch the, the bastards and do them in. Forget the bloody supplies. If they scarper, they'll report it to the police and the armies. Uh, and the army dosers. I think I'm too thick to figure that out. You're fully aware the force you're packing can't overcome my sword. That's why just now you tried to bluff, to scare us off. So what do, we do? what do we do now? You've got some plan, right? No wonder you keep wearing this outfit, even with all the risk it brings you. 
You want to bring this group... You want to be this group's leader. Hmm. I only gave you a light knock. You'll be spinning for a bit, that's all. I tested it plenty while... While saving hostages. I wouldn't mess it up. Oh, you're out. Did I use too much strength? Or, uh, um... Have you... Have you a lot not eaten for days? Really? I'm sorry, but, well, it's not right to loot either. You're not springing me! The instant the pipe comes out behind her, backpipe instinctively blocks. Both sides fall a step back. After seeing who it is, backpipe's eyes widen. Reed? Are your wounds okay? Are you alright? What are you doing out here in... Uh, wait, 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 you're part of this robbery too. I can't just let you go then. No, I wasn't in time to stop them. But regardless, I don't want them to, to be hurt and I don't want them to be captured either. Oh, then we are here on about the same mission. No need to eye me that carefully now. <laughs> Whether a Victorian serviceman or a Rhode Island operator, we can't be harming civilians. Me and Chen Chen were here to mediate and uh, mediate and all. Um, I say that, but I'm sorry. I think my strength is a little much for the average folk. How's about I help you carry the unconscious someplace shady to rest? Where are they headed uh, for this village? Please, I beg you, leave. The conflict is diffused. Say it all you like. I'm still going to help. You've got something on your mind from the looks of it now? Ah, alright, still not keeping, uh, still on keen on speaking then. They never let me visit you at Rodan and I didn't, and they didn't, and didn't tell me why either. Best I could guess was, you didn't want to be reminded of County Hillock. So what are you doing out here in these parts? And also, you look like you've been, uh, like you've been lost in the Barrens for days now. What's your mission even? Want me and Shenshen to come with you? Oh, there's just so much I want to ask you. Uh, my brain's going haywire. No, it's alright. I just happen to be invited by these people to escort them. In the past, I'd operate alone in the country for very long stretches. The dangers of the wild don't mean much to me. And also, I'm not here on a mission for Rhode Island. I'm pursuing some things related to Dublin. No wonder! Me and Chen Chen are doing the same. Must be why we ran into each other. You were so wounded back in County Hillock, Dublin must have weighed like nothing else on you too. There was a person in Dublin who changed my fate, so I want to see if I can still recover something from there. Whether it relieves the pain they bring or brings peace to myself. That's amazing! We were coming this way with the caravan looking for a Dublin unit, who showed up here in recent. Don't know why, but when I saw you, that gave me the shock of my life. Thank goodness you lot and Dublin aren't tied up. Oh boy. Say, I'll go have a talk with Chen Chen and we'll postpone the mission for a few days. I bet she's just as willing to help these people out. Oh boy, backpipe. <clears throat> How many people did I, uh, did I just now have shadowing me as... I entered this parlor? Take a guess. I have no interest in the act you put on in the midst of the Victorians and Tarrants. Then I really shouldn't thank you for the pains you took, rushing here to County Trent and drawing all the attention. I thought you'd spend a lot longer harboring yourself in the army. If the leader's plans progress to this stage, there is no real difference between my identity as part of Duke of Wellington's guard and that as of the officer of Dublin. Seeing as you have casters people surveilling you, they must have long gained possession of that information. We have little nibbles of Dublin forces cropping up outside the cities, and the rumors of a major Dublin force passing through. I'll put on show for them. Sprinkling a few mysterious trade orders, and now even the gossiping merchants know the Iron Duke has some design or other for the city. Everyone is quietly making the rounds, practically guessing what the Duke is borrowing Trent is borrowing Trent as a stage for. 
Very much as the leader expected. Yes, if they realize our two aim too, and every duke learned of the leader's resolution in advance, a fear of Grove's outskirts would be in the same merry state Londinium is. Say, are they more scared of the Sarkas or the Ter Tarants? Trying to pit Tarants against Sarkas. You have no right to make such jokes, feline of Victoria. I hear the spy is dead. Hmm, yes, and we've had access to far less intel from inside Londinium ever since. It really is a shame. It's not just Sarkas in there. You have some fairly interesting powers in hibernation. Your impulsiveness will ruin your plans. I've said as much before. Impulsiveness? Why can't few people would ever think that of me? You should perish thoughts of offering Mandragora survival. She was used by the Illusionist to try and fracture Dublin. She was meant to die in County Hillock along with those six traitors. Mandragora was the one the spy most trusted. Executing her before confirming if the spy had turned his coat, well, that wouldn't have been the wise move. Excuses. Even if it wasn't worth... Even if it wasn't worth myself or you in person, the task of supporting the spy should have gone to someone more dependable. Oh, come to speak of us, you never sat well with me. Don't you find it such good news that I've, I've never had the chance to kill you? Meaningless glibblather. You can't be acting rashly before the duke and the leader make their final decision. If you can this, uh, discern the importance of Londinium Intel, then of course I can. But whether we ultimately march on Londinium or not, that's still an unknown variable. Hinging upon our progress collaborating with the Duke. Of course, why else would I be so busy on my feet right now? <laughs> I still remember the Enclave campaign four years ago. How bitterly we awaited the results of our partnership with the nobles. And meanwhile, all our errand representatives were circling thousands of kilometers out, patiently pulling through several weeks just to tell the Duke one single thing. Harmony, you'd best stand on the leader's side. Or else? Bendragora is dead. I can stop investigating your whim to assist her. But she... she's still alive. Oh, you mean that dear pitiful Lakshini? We cannot have a repeat of the Illusionist's conspiracy in County Hillock. Each day she lives is a threat to Dublin and the Leader. The Leader has assigned control of her whereabouts to you. Don't let personal considerations affect you any further, Harmony. You have little leeway left to fail. Oh, and you do fantasize far too much about the emotional life of a professional spy. <laughs> Fine, fine, you can stop boring into me with your eyes, Brigadier, unless you want to help by applying my makeup. I do have a dinner party to attend. Not bad, Fionn, just like back then. I always think you're a bit useless, but then every time you get something done. <sighs> What use is borrowing this bit of rations going to do? These two are Victorians, right? They say they'll go to the city to replace anything we don't need, and sort you lot out some patents for self-defense. Should you be happy about getting a decent weapon? Fine, you listen to your little radio, check if they're broadcasting about merchants being looted. Maybe those cowards are scared Dublin will get back at them. Might not even report it at all. Hey, Fionn? What the... are you peering at back there? That infected handful. They've been following us at a far distance since we left the village. Still? Surprised they've kept up with us going so fast. And then with their sick legs and children to carry. Alright, I... it must be murder on them coming with us. I'm... I'm worried for Moran. Her eyes went bad in that... Uh, famine a few years back. She can't see that. Uh, she can't see the way in the dark. Now, uh, with the lights out happening, there's not even a single lamp left on. Oh no, that's sorry to hear. 
So can I ask what they're doing following us? Do we look like some kind of rescue team? I don't know. Um, probably it's the clothes you're wearing. Look, aside from me, everyone regards you like you're a real member of Dublin. And everyone knows Dublin's good to the Tarrants. It's simple as that. I'll go and see them. Oh, you made me jump. Your voice sounds a little quivery, say. You alright? It wouldn't be bad to have more people standing on guard duty. It'll be easier to avoid the patrol. I'll bring them with me. Alright, and we continue on to stage 3. Our final stage for today, titled Burn the Haystacks. She dares not look upon her own shadow, but everyone has noticed the firelight by her side. Jumping back into the past, eight years ago. <clears throat> uh, history records that out of a sense the war between the Draco and Aslan had become far too protracted and bitter. The final King Gael signed a peace treaty. Legends say he opted to melt down his soldiers' weapons as a sign of his determination, but his sub subjects could hardly accept such a defeat. Thus they conspired to revolt and assassinate the monarch. But just as you've referenced in many a speech, a single assassination is not enough to extinguish the Red Dragon's whole bloodline. No matter how the Victorians write their histor the history books, they cannot change what facts we've seen with our own eyes. The Aslan promised to share Victoria's kingship with the Draco, yet didn't hand over the crown for nearly a century. With the lion's ambition so conspicuous to this point, I wonder, six blades Mark stabbed King Gale through, how many of them were by Aslan hands? Not to mention the Draco King fleeing the royal capital after fate unknown and the Kingdom of Tara without its ruler was subjugated under Victorian sover sovereign authority as if a matter of course. I presume it wasn't his own subjects who prevented the Draco's return to the city. This is why I very much enjoy your works based on the Taran's own ballads. You've led the people to see more of history's truth. Thank you for your appreciation. To write this story, I saw plays performed in other country and paid a visit to some wandering minstrels who'd inherited the Taran tradition. But what struck me the most wasn't the endangerment to Taran culture, it was how so many lives were just slipping away. Perhaps you believe the Taran's ideal nation and a border with Victoria are necessary for the Taran people to be saved, but I think if we ourselves can live better, we can plant seeds of ideas for the many Tarans who can't read. Won't we have one then and there against the Victorians who want us trapped in ignorance and poverty all our lives? Back in present time? You want to bring that lot with you? Don't even think about it. You'll wait until they rest. If you share your own food with them, that, that I can accept. If you'll wait until they rest, if you share your food with them, then that I can accept. But we've avoided a patrol out of pure luck the last few day two days. What if we don't uh, what if we don't the next time? Those kids must be seven or eight. Can't fight back with weapons. Can't run fast enough. What do you do about that? I can fight. I'll protect them. You want to cross through the uninhabited region to completely escape Trent's jurisdiction. I can aid you in the hallway. I contacted the organization I belong to with the help of Bagpipe and Shen, my colleagues. I've confirmed the closest safe house is just along this way. If we, if all we need is some tents and a small amount of emergency supplies for the countryside, they can transport it over without a problem. And I know the territory over there belongs to a well-hearted duke. Once we're there, the army won't be after you anymore, at the very least. Really? There's an honest-to-god noble who'd smile on people like us? 
He has reasons to shelter the torrents. And how do you know? Before long, perhaps we'll all know. We'll have ways to survive bringing those people along. But don't forget, they're infected. We've constantly been scarpering with our lives. What are we doing? Uh, what are we doing inviting death to our sides? And we don't know when the sick will have their flare-ups or when they'll just kick the bucket or, uh, outright. What's the point in you sa uh, saving these sorts of people? <laughs> I don't know. I only know that when someone saved me, I wanted to ask her the same. Why? Even though I was so close to death. What are you getting at? I'm infected too. Uh, um... <clears throat> uh, Alright, that doesn't mean much to be infected. Wouldn't have lived much longer than infected ourselves without your help anyway. <laughs> Still, our apathy won't spread just because we're in the same place. It's okay, you can keep a bit of distance if you're scared. I don't mind. But take those infected with you on your escape. Trust me. Fine. I trust you. Salmon, I heard what... Uh, you heard what she said? I'm not fleeing. If you're gonna take the ones that can't fight, take them. Suit your own self. But my aim isn't gonna change one bit. I'm returning to Dublin. Meanwhile... These two units have gone unaccounted for a week by now. We may surmise these circumstances relate to Dublin, being similar to past Spectre Force incidents. Similar? No, the situation, situation we're looking at now is completely unlike. These rebels previously would muster a single armed force to, to surface somewhere, launch an attack, and that was it. Now violence which we suspect to be Dublin inside it is blanketing every corner of Southern Victoria. Is the Marquess of Trent sticking uh, fast to his orders? Obviously, no matter the volume of suspicions, suspicious circumstances reported outside nomadic cities, we must have clar uh, clarity on them, get this entire region's state of affairs under control. But of all the small-scale conflicts, only the arson at Redridge seems truly sus uh, suspect, and there was no follow-up on the fire there either. Maybe we should set these particular dossiers aside for now, or should we leave them? Please, lend said dossiers to me, officer. You're j And refrain with the greetings. Also, just, just as before, no need to make a record of, of access to these dossiers. And this arson may be worth a deeper investigation. Back to our group. Have a, sa have a sip of water, old Brandon. I picked some berries too. This place can't be too far from a settlement. What well, is the grove this thick? You want some berries too, Holly? Alright. You eat those and then you walk on your own two legs this afternoon. Won't need anyone else carrying you, okay? How about you, Moran? Wait, you don't eat stuff this sweet, do you? Thank you. <sighs> hey, how long are we stopping here for? While Backpipe and Shen are fetching things for us, we'll all knacker as is, anyhow. Not a chance to catch our breaths. Don't worry, I guarantee you will find, uh, find the closest village before lights out. We're far enough from all the trouble we made anyhow. If we hang around here and hold up for a few days, we ought to get, uh, oughtn't get caught. Fine, pick me some berries too. First time seeing you happy in days. Uh, <laughs> really? I've just been glad Reed's so reliable, and her two friends too. Kind souls. Plus they can fight. You sure? It's not just how your days of suffering are almost at an end. We're going to keep pushing into the wastes, find Dublin and join them. You... Uh, you though, I bet you prefer to stay behind in village life. Uh, I can't say that for sure. I, uh... uh I just can't get over you a lot doing... Uh, things this way. We were all happy just with escaping at first, the further the better, 
That was before we ran into Salmon. She only got to uh, persuade you all to join Dublin once stuff got tougher on us. None of you have even seen a real Dublin army, have you? Are you still thinking about Reed? She contacted Rhode Island in full view of us after borrowing our comms equipment. Getting supplies has been smooth too. All signs indicate she's not out to trick us. <laughs> I'm not suspect uh, suspecting her as much. I'm just a little concerned. Did she really make a recovery? Granted, she's a weaver, but I still, but I'm still a little surprised at all the life in her. She's gave my hands a right shock swinging at me before we recognized each other. Suppose that's a good thing, though. Just I can't shake the feeling there is weight on her mind. Whatever it is, she wants to do it, but it seems to hurt her so much. Plus... Plus what? The way she fights just seems somehow familiar. Did I meet her even before Outcast brought her in back at County Hillock? Oh, hi, there you are, Reed. Perfect. Me and Chen, uh, Chen Chen have been, uh, been talking. We're talking about which way we're heading. This route happens to take us to a nearby settlement. No, we can't keep going in this direction. I'll tell the others to stop. Are you saying... Chen Chen, on your nine! <laughs> the cavalry saber concealed in the bushes snaps in two. The one holding it doesn't shift an inch. Shen is sure she sla her slash didn't harm anyone, but out from under the bush is still a hint of spilled blood. Blood deep and dark, old and dry. Is this... that patrol? No, they're from the barracks. There's more over there. <sighs> Traces of bolts, sabers and arts. This battle probably happened a week ago. This barracks unit was ambushed and slaughtered to a man. How was the enemy then? How come they didn't leave a single corpse behind? They've left. They're all left? But with a battle this fierce, both sides should have taken equal damage, right? Backpap, remember the group of soldiers we discovered before encountering Reed? Hmm, they had uncanny arts planted in them, eyes full of fire. Reed, you were in County Hillock too. Didn't you, didn't you see soldiers like that? Yes, I know of them. They're parted souls. Those with the misfortune of being deceased, yet unable to rest. You're not saying the ones we killed these the ones who killed these soldiers are dead themselves, and they're still marching even after? The traces of firefights we were chasing before, it resembles those two. It's the only possibility. Chen Chen, I don't know what your thoughts are, but I, I can't quite accept it. If that's what this is, what kind of person would keep on controlling them even after they're dead? That's just far too cruel. <laughs> Salmon? Like hell they're dead. You're all howling up the wrong tree. But we saw with our own eyes. We saw something some somewhere else. I only believe what I see myself. Dublin defeated a Victorian unit. They won, moved on to the next place, and now they're prepping to save more tyrants. You know, I'm gonna... Are you worried about something? Doesn't act like my da. If Beyond's lot want, uh, want to go with you, suits their own selves, but I know you're not in with us. It's those two Weaver you're with. You just want to settle us some, someplace. Ensure we're not going to die today. It'll make us live the same old life Victoria had for us, not knowing if we'll see tomorrow. And after that, you'll abandon us. <laughs> Am I right, leader? No. No, don't call me that. Right, no. Single word I've heard most from you so far. I'm heading off now, going the way you didn't want us to go. It's only war and death, isn't it? Like the tyrants haven't seen plenty of both. I don't want to hear an outsider tell me no ever again. I know she's fuming, but 
Truth is, it's not you who's uh, who's pissing her off. I know. So are you? Um, are you all right? I want to go with her. There still might be unexploded mines and lingering arts left on the battlefield. It would be dangerous to keep going that way. Can you call the rest over for me? Didn't you want these tyrants to steer clear of the battlefield? <laughs> but Salmon says it's their choice. And I I promised I'd escort them until... Until I'm no longer needed. Youch, That hurts. Until I'm no longer needed. Youch. Anyway, we do have one new unit here, which is the Dublin Cannoneer. A ranged combat, uh, combatant in the Dublin forces. They use a modified standard issue Victorian military crossbow fitted with a launcher for explosive ammunition. So let's continue. Never imagined we'd get a hot meal indoors, safe and sound, after so many days on the run. That backpipe girl must be the darling of everyone. We were all gushing to hear about how good her stew was. Hmm. She's definitely not bad on that front. How's your discussion on settling down? Has it been smooth? We're all decided. Anyone who can't handle rushing, uh, uh, rushing will stay behind. They'll borrow two storehouses to tuck away in the next two days. Refugees scuffling with caravans, but never actually st uh, stealing anything. That's that common. The law won't get hung up on that. In a few days, they won't be mentioning it on the radio anymore. And we won't need to hide. Then we can get to building our own houses. Uh, but the few with the Ripper feel be living a bit out from the village. The people here are very friendly. Uh, yeah, they are. If anyone sheltered us while we were still running, we wouldn't be in this style of uh, state now. Not that it's anyone's fault. It used to be much hassle taking in a bunch of refugees or the like, but life's getting scarier for everyone now. Look at Salmon, the, uh, the Colleen. If she and her brother had some place to take them in, she wouldn't be running from settlement to settlement, kicking up all this fuss. She could spend the night in the village like us. But she's all stubborn about hiding outside, since she, she stole a man's stock beast here once, see? And now she's awkward about running into him. <sighs> you never heard it from me. You let her know she'll be on my case about this, respecting her again. Good evening. Oh, Moran. What are you doing here so dark out? I'll send you back while the lamps are still lit. Thank you, but I'm used to making my way in the dark by now. Is Reed here, if you don't mind? You're looking for her? She won't... She went out of her own. Maybe Reed's got something on her mind. Sam hasn't spoken so much as a word to her since she got here. Don't worry. Bella. Backpipe's got, uh, gone to find her. Hmm. Actually, put it this way. Our bigger concern is if Reed gets annoyed by the noise. <laughs> God damn it, Chen. <clears throat> Whoa, sorry. It's alright. Oh, I wasn't watching out. Didn't think there'd be anyone here. It all goes pitch dark every, t uh, every time they sound the bell. Takes a moment to, uh, for my eyes to adjust. Lucky it's you I ran into. Might have knocked anyone else clean over. If you're gonna ask me, how the hell is she missing someone who has their tail, tip of the tail, lit on fire in the dark? Don't ask me. I have better questions as to why they were able to hide, even if it was behind bushes earlier as well, from the patrols. I get it, she probably can control the intensity of the flames or can maybe even almost completely extinguish them. It's, after all, arts at the end of the day, <laughs> not literal fire fire, but um, let's not get into details, shall we? 
It's bugging me, but I'll roll with it. <clears throat> anyway. Though they said they wouldn't need anyone uh, on watch tonight, though. Uh, thought. I just wanted to sit for a while outside. Oh, it's the smell of the hay, isn't it? Wonderful, that. Hay? Yeah, that's hay piles over there. Been ages since I was around the smell, so I came out to get a proper whiff of them. Back when I was prepping to get into military school, I'd have headaches from studying so much theory. So I'd just got, get into a hay pile and lie back for a while, for a bit, and I'd feel right as rain again. Mom always told me off for being lazy and <laughs> said I shouldn't quit thinking about questions just because thinking go go gets too hard, but having too much stuff going on in your brain does wear a person out, you know. <laughs> so give me your hand a second. Um. So for anyone who is just listening to this narration, I do want you to look at your screen for just a moment and appreciate this adorable blushing Draco. Appreciate it? Good. Moving on. Come on, here now. Let's lie down together, just for a bit. I'm not so good at thinking over stuff, so I might not be of much help to you, but the hay will be. I'm sure of it. <laughs> what are you saying, Backpipe? The hay is more IQ than you? <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> Backpipe relaxes and lies back on the hay pile, lightly humming a folk song she learned just a while ago from the farmers. Gentle night breeze passes by, Reed follows her suggestion and takes a deep breath. And once again, it is really bugging me, but is it safe to put Reed next to a pile of hay? <laughs> Isn't that a fire hazard? <clears throat> anyway. But what she smells isn't the aroma of hay, it is instead damp mud and ash. When it hits me how I've spent three years without going home, it always feels so funny. Think about it, the ground's waiting for you to till it, the weeds waiting for you to reap it. Spend one year away and you miss an entire go-round go of all the important stuff, every bit of it. I can't even get my letters from home until the next time I'm back on uh, Rhode Island. Do you miss home very much? Of course I do. You? Were you from County Hillock? No, but I used to live in a city about the same as County Hillock. Flushed red bricks, grave pavements, buildings two or three floors high, flowering vines growing around the windows. I yearn after those peaceful times a lot. There were so many old books at home, and some manuscripts too. I like to hide away in the study and lock the door so I wouldn't have to hear anyone talk to me. Oh, you had piles of family making a racket then? Or was it visitors all the time? Uh, no, thankfully, just I couldn't avoid so much trouble if I hid. I could see into the street from the window there. I'd see my parents come back after a day of work. I would love to go back there, if I could. Oh, so the place isn't... Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm making it worse for you, aren't I? It's okay. It was all so long ago. I might not be much different to the... It, I might not be much different to the ordinary people whose lives were ruined at County Hillock, or to these refugees leaving their home behind. They can all settle down here and rebuild their houses, but... Where is their homeland? And the ones who are forced out even further? Where are they fleeing to? Hmm, you're having trouble answering these questions just on your lonesome, aren't you? Hmm. But I'm not saying it's no, uh, no use thinking o uh, over them. If we can't come up with an answer alone, we can think together. Whenever I had a question I couldn't fill in, I'd always bother Chen Chen about it. And later down the line, I'd prattle on at my captains. I mean, they found me annoying and flip. But still, they chat with me uh, every time, help me solve issues. What about you? You go, you got anyone to speak your mind to, like a sister or a schoolmate or someone in in arms, that sort of. <laughs> There's my older sister. 
but you don't get along much. <laughs> no, I shouldn't be saying this. I shouldn't. You know, someone was right about one thing, actually. You're always saying no out of habit. But you misunderstood it a little. It's when you're talking about yourself that you're most fond of saying no, like... Oh, I can't put it into words. It's like you're straining to break away from something. I've been told something like that before. Oh, what? Really? She saved me and told me I didn't have to seek death. That I could dodge destiny. Outcast, huh? There's something she would say. I regret... I regret not having it in me to say anything more to her. I want to ask her so badly. Why save me? What did she see in me? No. I'm not sure how she'd answer myself. But, you know, Reed, why not ask yourself before asking her? What do you see in yourself? My... self? Oh! Someone's over there! With the way they feel about, I think it's Moran. She can't see at night. Gosh! Why is she out here all by herself then? Miss Moran! Need any help from us? Oh, you just stand still there for a second, we'll be right over. Thank you. Where's Reed? Can I ask? They said she's uh, she'd gone out. I'm right here. Sorry, excuse me, but uh, am I able to go with you? I don't mind where it is. I've still got some th strength that can work. I can fight and fight. Um, you want to fight? I do. They all say I won't live much longer, that my only option's dying without a word in some corner. I don't agree with that. If you want to survive as a Taran, then change workshops and accept lower pay. If you want to survive with a Ripafi, then move out and get to the infected neighborhood. I'm done listening to all that. Reed, I used to not be in this way, but then I met you. They tell me you're an infected too. It's you who convinced Salmon and the rest to bring us here. You trust me like Fion does. Please, no pressure. I, I don't want to be a burden on you or anyone. I just want to do something, anything. People like me have nothing left to lose as is. If I can bring something or other to the, t uh, to the rest of the Tarans, then I want to do it. If my legs will still walk forward, then I want to go with you. Hmm. I think that's fine. Reed, for now, let's go together. How about it? The red-haired weaver, the question's not one Reed needs to respond to, because she starts pulling Reed along before an answer even comes. Reed takes a glance back at their visitor. She knows Moran has night blindness and needs someone to guide the way when darkness falls. With little time to hesitate, Reed extends a hand to Moran. Let's go. Meanwhile... Here you finally are, Miss Harmony. I was beginning to think I'd never see you today. Am I testing uh, courtesy of the Viscount? How could I ever, uh, ever miss it? Well, of course, well, of course. A friend of the Mar Marquess of Brent. You were the Viscount's guest of honor. It's all thanks to your introdu uh, introducing me that I closed out that bit of prior business. I've been looking for an opportunity to thank you all this time. Oh, it was quite nothing, Mr. Hall. I'm no, I'm no noble personage. I have no noble personage or even uh, property in my name. At most, I'm just a messenger, scampering around so the ones in charge don't have to. <laughs> Fisher somewhere by. Nearby, toasts. Who might he be? The consul's pet. Ah, uh, Mr. Fisher. Oh, well, i am certainly never heard of him before. He only transferred to this country a short while ago. Youngsters like him tend to have to break their backs a little if they want a quick promotion. 
<laughs> I universal truth, no? You're too modest. Oh, yes, I heard from some friends that, that the Duke's armies are very frequent on the move now. They have put every core city of their duchies under strict martial law. You've always been on top of the news. Could you lend me a sly word whenever war seems imminent? The paper certainly forecasted, don't they? After all, the Duke's fleets did uh, trundle up to Londinium's walls some while ago. I'm not much concerned with the Sarkas. I'm referring to between the Dukes. <clears throat> Based on her hearsay, that is. Just hearsay. There's been a lot of original fuel circulating into count Country Tent. Trent, the Marquess and the Duke of Castor have always been jolly with the dark other, but County Trent and the Iron Duke's duchy share a border. My, my, Mr. Hall. All intercity fuel trade requires inspection and approval. I presume you have some very good friends in municipal management, no? Uh, <laughs> just for business purposes. Miss Harmony, you might not allow the war too closely, but... Not follow the war too closely, but you came in from another city, didn't you? You've been fortunate not to run into any hassle when you did, but I do ask you take care of the return journal journey. I hear it's hideous in the villages beyond the nomadic cities. There's rebel elements popping up now and then, even a case of arson a few days ago. What sort of rebel elements are there to earn your attention? Attention is a strong word. Several things happen in space everywhere the bumpkins live. It's that fire that's strange. <laughs> this might not be true, so pretend I'm just telling you about some country tale. Eyewitnesses say the fire wasn't quite your ordinary one. It was voracious as an explosion, but not a hint of origin explosives were found where it happened, and the nightmarish effort it took to extinguish it. Unusual fire. All too likely to be a coincidence, but all too familiar of a description to her. Could it be... Lakshini? Harmony is stunned. The Brigadier's warning has certainly roused some anxieties deep in her heart. Ever since that Rhode Island ship had sailed into Victoria, she'd been absent any hold of information on Lakshini. Someone, without a doubt, had been helping Rhode Island cover their tracks. Clearly, this pharmaceutical company was not as simple as she first assumed. And on the same coin, a Lakshini aboard Rhode Island would be a Lakshini immensely difficult for the rest of Victoria's powers to find. Uh, once again, for the listeners, listeners only, I would like to point out that right now on the CG we see a, see a very stunned Harmony and turning, or rather behind her, back to back, uh, a bit in the distance, is our dear friend Fisher. Continuing. So why, why would Lakshini leave the ship? Why would she surface somewhere so close to Eblana? From behind Harmony, there is a gaze. Her every move has been closely watched since the second she stepped into the ballroom. But it is this moment when the gaze truly focuses on her. Uh, Miss Harmony? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, I was just uh, thinking about the dance tonight. Say, what color earrings would be what would I be best of wearing? <clears throat> Sir, I assume you've seen the relevant dossier as well as all my reports. I suggest we commence operation immediately. Very well done, youngster. Have you tried the whiskey-filled chocolate salt on the table? <laughs> I hope you're well, Duke of Castor. I didn't expect you would grace this party, let alone be waiting here. Who could miss such a grand sorry? 
Just listening to the chamber performance blows my cares away, even from behind my partition. I do hope you're enjoying yourself too. I'm still on duty. I can't be complacent. Our every effort is made so that the masses can enjoy their serene lives. Intelligence officers may be the lookouts, forced to keep a tense nerve even in times of peace, but you'll have your serenity serenity one day. Let's I, last I forget, how's your health? My gratitude for your concern, Duke. It floors me that you note the infection of an average intelligence officer like myself. I uh Don't be nervous. You're not hiding anything. As I say, you've done very well. By way of a reward, would you like a promotion after your mission is over, or would you like to quit? And that is where we are gonna end for today. But I would like to add one little detail here. Uh, that is concerning the two names that just came up. For people who are aware of the Ablana Lakshmi thing, obviously. Uh, that is something that was mentioned in the main story, which is exactly why I said it's kind of important. But at this point, the story will be mentioning the name of, uh, well... Reed sister anyway, so um, not much point in hiding it, right? However, I would like to add one particular detail here, and that is the meaning of the names Eblana and Lakshmi. And I would like to read this paragraph here, which I've already read in another place of the story. So, uh, <clears throat> Eblana, from a Greek, from Greek, uh, is an ancient Irish settlement that appears in the Geographia of Claudius Ptolemaeus. The Greek astronomer and cartographer around the year 140 AD. It was traditionally believed by scholars to refer to the same site as the modern city of Dublin. The 19th century writer Louis Agassiz used the Blana as a Latin equivalent for Dublin. However, most uh, more recent scholarship favor, uh, favors the North County Dublin seaside village of Lakshmi due to its proximity to Drumana an important trading site with strong links to Roman Britain. It has even been described as a bridgehead of a possible Roman invasion. However, there is no definitive proof of, uh, to tie Eblana to any location, so its exact identity is still a matter of speculation. And there is the importance, I've already used this in another, uh, in another place, but yeah, that is the importance between the two names of Eblana and Lakshmi. Kind of both refer to Dublin, in a sense. But yeah, I wanted to add this extra detail here because right here at the end the uh, name Eblana comes back up. So uh, yeah. Anyway, this will be it for today. Next time we're obviously gonna continue with the next couple of scenes, stages, and so on and so forth. But for now, thank you very much for listening and watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this. If you did, please consider leaving a like. It helps me a lot and means a lot to me <laughs> to know that you guys are enjoying enjoying this, these narrations, pardon. Ugh, losing words at this point. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Uh, there is much more on the channel like this uh, done in this fashion. So, uh, yeah, enjoy your time. <laughs> and uh, as always, if you're pulling for read, good luck. Uh, <laughs> I already have the pull video up as of uh, this now recording, so... Uh, my luck has a bit returned, I guess. <laughs> it's it's been a while since it was that lucky, so I'm I'm very happy that I get to keep some stuff for uh, the next banner that's gonna be coming around in probably a month. Uh, but I hope you have the same luck as me, and if not, even better. But like I said, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, and I hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are. And I will see you in the next part. Until then, bye bye.